Hey everyone, another artist today, and one that I think I have, I know I have seen many of you mention on the channel that I should check out at some point, and that is Tori Amos. Um, I don't know that much about her yet, but I know that this piece, which is um, Winter, was released in 1992, which has me a bit curious because I've listened to several pieces from the 90s now, all kind of grungy focused, and I'm curious to see how this one fits into that scenario, if it's different, if it belongs to the same style, we'll find out. Um, remember, you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon pages if you want to support this journey as I explore music I've never heard before. And we're having lots of fun there, uh, doing some live listens to music together, and as well as all sorts of exclusive stuff which can't go here on YouTube. So what do I have to learn about Tori Amos? Tori Amos is an American singer, songwriter, and pianist. She is a classically trained musician with a mezzo-soprano vocal range. Having already begun composing instrumental pieces on piano, Amos won a full scholarship to the Peabody Institute at Johns Hopkins University at the age of five, the youngest person ever to have been admitted. That means she was already composing instrumental pieces on the piano before the age of five, if she was admitted at the age of five. A little bit of a precocious young girl. She had to leave at the age of 11 when her scholarship was discontinued for what Rolling Stone described as musical insubordination. Ah, so she didn't just want to follow the standard classical track, I suppose, and probably her scholarship, she was supposed to go a certain direction and she didn't want to. She was 11. She must have really known her mind. Tori Amos has received five MTV VMA nominations and eight Grammy Award nominations, and won an Echo Classic Award for her Night of Hunters classical crossover album. She is listed on VH1's 1999 100 Greatest Women of Rock and Roll at number 71. Artists who have been influenced and or admire Amos's work include Amy Lee of Evanescence, I remember that, Oli Alexander of Years and Years, Justin Timberlake, I don't think I've ever heard any of his music, but I do know the name. I guess he's more modern. Olivia Rodrigo and Leighton Meister? Meister? Winter was Amos' first single to reach the top 40 in any country, peaking at number 25 in the United Kingdom two weeks after its release. Winter. Like... Vivaldi's Four Seasons Winter. Let's see what it sounds like. Snow can wait, I forgot my mittens Wipe my nose, get my new boots on I get a little warm in my heart when I think of winter I put my hand in my father's clothes I run off where the drifts get Sleeping beauty it trips me with a frown I hear a voice You must learn to stand up For yourself Cause I can't always be around He says When you gonna make up your
nothing grungy about it, is there? Um, she does have a lovely voice. She does, and and it does have that sort of almost easy listening classical quality to it. Um, you can't quite call it serious classical. It clearly has a little bit of a mix with more popular rhythms and simple chord progressions, uh, song style, but, but it's a nice mix. There's the, there's the string orchestra backing, there's the piano, there's the voice. It's a nice, gentle quality. Actually, it doesn't have that much in common with Vivaldi's Winter, does it? Because it's more song style. It is... And it's putting quite a bit of emphasis on the lyrics. Um, I like this second line. I forgot my mittens. Wipe my nose. Get my new boots on. The, the things we have to do in the cold. So, so ordinary. So everyday. And... It's like a, a little, a little portrait of this little child. I can, I can picture it as sort of painting, almost, let's see, I'm trying to decide which artist it reminds me of. I'll have to think about that. But it really puts an image in my mind and it's not the, not, well, the music sort of contributes to it. It gives us that gentle, kind of sentimental feel. But the lyrics are where the story resides. I run off to where the drifts get deeper. Sleeping beauty trips me with a frown. I hear a voice. You must learn to stand up for yourself because I can't always be around. He says, when are you going to make up your mind? When are you going to love you as much as I do? This is about a moment of daughter and father going out and enjoying the winter wonderland together, a walk in the snow when she's still little and the drifts trip her short little legs as she tries to wade through them. Um, and somehow she has these very special memories. I wonder, I get the feeling as I'm reading through here, that probably he didn't actually say those words in that way. I don't think most fathers would lecture a young girl like that. It's more about the, the message she got from her time spent with her father. Things are going to change so fast. All the white horses are still in bed. I tell you that I'll always want you near. You say that things change, my dear. And it goes on talking this conversation between them. But I think it was more about the relationship between them than the actual words spoken. And the, the music sets this as a sort of memory. It's a memory of a time when she was young and small, innocent, starry-eyed, struggling through the snow that reaches up to her knees because she's so little, and her father was there. That's what she remembers. And the music gives us this sort of warm, sentimental, kind of almost Thomas Kincaid style of memory.
feels a little bit like like the heart beating in your ears when you have a, a fluffy hood or hat over your head and you hear it echoing bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. listen to that it's just painting the picture for us <laughs> I had to stop for a moment and check the lyrics. I thought it said air is gray. And I was just saying, it, it paints this picture of a, of a winter wonderland with, with clear sky and icy tree branches. And, and it's after the storm. The snow is fluffy and white, and there are little little cardinals and chickadees fluttering around looking for a seed here or there. It doesn't say air is gray. It says hair is gray. Hair is gray, and the fires are burning. So many dreams on the shelf. So now we're stepping forward in time. You say I wanted you to be proud. I always wanted that myself. When are you going to make up your mind? So now, this is an older woman with gray hair thinking back to what her father, what she gained from her father and saying it to herself. When are you going to make up your mind? When are you going to love you as much as I do? When are you going to make up your mind? Because things are going to change so fast. Hair is already gray. I always wanted that myself. All the white horses have gone ahead. I tell you that I always want you near. You say that things change, my dear. Never change. I'm just reading ahead a little bit because... Clearly this is building up to a climactic moment, a, a conclusion of all this memory that's been running through the mind. So many dreams on the shelf. You say I wanted you to be proud of me. Soprano choral voices. Changes the perspective of this life. Love you as much as I do. When you go to make your mind, because it's a strength. Change, my dear. Never 
very beautifully sweet, innocent, um, shall I say, confidently loved expression. This is somebody who's been through life in her own way, but it's somebody who has always known that she was loved, at least by one person, her father. That was her childhood memory. And even now, as she's reflecting on perhaps her shortcomings, asking herself the question, when are you going to love yourself as much as I do? She's able to ask it that way because she was always loved by her father. She lived her life freely in her own way, but with this as the foundation that she was able to grow from and go from. It's incredibly sweet and, and um, gentle. You don't really feel any trauma in it. You don't feel... You might feel a bit of reflection. You might feel that perhaps she does have regrets, but the music doesn't express that and the lyrics don't express that because it's about something else that is deeper and more lasting than any of the mistakes she's made through her life, any of the regrets she might have, any of the faults and shortcomings she knows about herself um, or the wrongs other people have done to her. I don't know if this really falls into the rock category. It's so... It's so... Um, moving towards the classical and, and more popular, easy listening style. But you can hear a few little touches of things that, that are drawn from the rock tradition. There are, there are a few syncopations which really are established in the rock music. Same as the, um, some of her vocal use, use of her voice. We can hear it comes from blues and rock style singing. But again, it's not about the specific genre. It is a lovely expression, a kind of step into a magical dream world that for somebody is actually real. Wouldn't it be lovely if it were real for everybody? And that is why it makes me think of some of the artists like Thomas Kincaid, you know, the, the painter of light, who paints, paints these beautiful sentimental winter scenes and they bring back memories for so many of us of moments in our lives when we, when we saw something like that or imagined something like that or even experienced something like that. Those memories are so precious and important. And as we see in this piece of music, they carry us through some of our biggest, most important moments of figuring out how do we relate to our own selves. Lovely. Compositionally, it's nice. It's a simple song style. She does it in a storytelling way. You hear a lot of repeated, repeated notes um, on one pitch, and then it c carries on. Da -dum -bum, ba -da -dum -bum -bum. You know, just building up. The orchestra does a nice job behind of, of giving the ebb and flow. The piano, the piano carries it through. It's it's really nicely balanced. None of it stands out to me as being jaw-droppingly incredibly impressive, but it doesn't have to be. It's incredibly well-chosen, well-stated for its purpose. What is most special about this musically, I would say, is her voice. 
and I haven't commented on that until now because I wanted to hear her voice all the way through. She does handle it incredibly well. She goes from a soft, delicate, um, tender tone to, to a really strong, focused tone. She does it in a way that enhances the meaning. It's not just a, um, you know, I'm going to do this with my voice here, I'm going to do that with my voice there. It is, it is truly an artistic tool for her. Um, there are places where it warms and gets full, other places where it gets a bit more edgy. Very, very nicely done. And I guess I would, it's a, it's a pleasant voice to listen to. I would enjoy hearing some more of her music and see what else she has to offer because clearly she has a lot of ability. Or had? Is she alive still? Blood nodding behind the camera. I guess I will explore her some more. And thank you to all of those of you who have been calling out her name on my channel. I finally got to it. I enjoyed it very much. And I'll see you soon.